Good morning. Um, I've been invited to give a talk on mosaics, which is a subject that I think a lot of people are confused about. So let's see if we can give a little more clarity on, on this topic. Um, first, disclosures, uh, a few. Um, I'm the chief scientific officer of at Cooper Genomics, and uh, for historical reasons also, I guess you can say that I have a conflict because I founded Reprogenetics, Recombine, Phosphorus, um, but answers, and I'm in the board of uh, Previvo. The, what we want to uh, solve, or uh, what I want to uh, give you as, as uh, learning points for this lecture is to uh, have a, a good grip of what's the incidence of mosaicism, um, what are the chances of these mosaics reaching term, and if there are differences between mosaics uh, regarding their uh, potential for for reaching term. Sorry, this this was messed up. Um, so first, let's see which methods are best to detect mosaicism. Uh, as you know, there are a bunch of, of uh, different techniques that uh, we can use for uh, PGS. Of those techniques, uh, some are just uh, detecting a few data points, and the one that we are using is uh, high-resolution agent sequencing, which is testing on average about 700,000 uh, data points. And that uh, allows us to, uh, obviously because there is more resolution, uh, to detect if you have uh, mosaicisms. Let's say if you have a biopsy which five cells, uh, you will be able to see if you have one in five or four in five uh, and so on. So this is uh, why we're using now uh, this technique mostly. Um, also the, because it's cheaper than the other techniques, but uh, really it's the one that it's giving us uh, more resolution. You can detect all types of abnormalities, meanwhile the others uh, are not. Um, also, it's useful for uh, translocations because we get about uh, a 3 megabase resolution compared to other techniques uh, in which, for instance, uh, Let's say every CGH you get six, uh, quantitative PCR you get uh, less, and Embryo, uh, another um, sequencing technique, uh, you get only 20, 20 megabases or so. Uh, this is just an evolution of PGS uh, over the years. Uh, and as you can see in our lab right now, uh, we have switched almost completely, or I think completely, to NetGen sequencing. Um, and basically RCGH is being uh, replaced by this technique, uh, especially now that uh, Illumina is discontinuing uh, servicing this, this technique. Um, just, just a little bit of uh, how agent sequencing works. Basically, uh, you get a bunch of um, sequences uh, that are mapped to each chromosome, and then um, you compare them to each chromosome. So um, you have, let's say, these, these three chromosomes, and depending on the amount of sequences that, that you have, uh, you could uh, determine if it's normal, uh, abnormal, or in between. So you have then a mosaic. We have uh, done validation, extensive validation on this technique, uh, comparing mostly uh, embryos that were classified by another technique, let's say a RACGH, um, as abnormal or normal. Uh, and on those cases, you get a 100% correlation between the two, um, the two methods. However, uh, when you have mosaics, uh, you would classify them uh, mostly as euploid. 16 were classified as euploid, 4 were classified as aneuploid uh, by NetGen sequence, I'm sorry, by array CGH. And polyploids uh, were not uh, classifiable by array CGH. So the advantage is that we can uh, detect some triploidies, uh, 69XYY or 69XXY. Uh, we can detect mosaics between 20 and 80 percent. If you biopsy five cells, if you biopsy 10 cells, you can detect 10 percent to 90 percent. Although we don't recommend to biopsy 10 cells, uh, we have 
a paper coming show, um, and also the the group of Richard Scott and Treff published that if you biopsy 10 cells or more uh, you will have a detrimental effect on, on implantation. Uh, the resolution is, is quite high between 3 to 1.5 megabases depending on, on the biopsy um, and sorry <laughs> this uh, was misplaced uh, and this is because we have a, a higher dynamic range when we do this analysis. Um, most of this is, is not new. Uh, as you know, there are, or you should know, there are uh, lots of papers in, in the 90s and 2000s uh, showing uh, the analysis of all the cells at cleavage stage and also at uh, plasticity stage uh, using fish and um, all these studies show uh, the same, more or less, same rate of mosaicism that we are finding now uh, in blastocy. So it's not that uh, because now we switch from RACGH or quantitative PCR to net gen sequencing, now we find mosaics. Uh, mosaics have been with us and we've been transferring them for a long time. This is just an example of comparing net gen sequencing with RACGH. So, um, because of the higher dynamic range, you can see that uh, the sample uh, in the bottom will have been classified as uh, monosomic by RACGH. Meanwhile, by net gen sequencing, now we will classify it as a mosaic. Another example of a mosaic embryo. Um, now, what we uh, so to further the validation, what we did also it's uh, mixing uh, two different samples, one normal and one abnormal in different ratios. So uh, we had uh, a cell line which had a monosomy 16 and a trisomy 18, and we mixed them in different ratios. So um, on top is the, the normal cell line, on the bottom the abnormal cell line. Uh, then uh, we did uh, ratios of uh, 90 to 10. As you could see, you, you cannot distinguish them uh, at all here. Uh, but you start uh, to be able to distinguish it with 20%. 30%, 40 percent, 50 percent, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Um, also we've done some analysis of comparing uh, different areas of uh, the blastocyst, inner cell mass, and different areas of the trophectoderm uh, to see if um, you have correlation between uh, the two tissues. Uh, what we found is that uh, if you have a complete aneuploidy, uh, you have 0% chance that the inner cell mass is it's, uh, it's normal. Uh, same thing with complex uh, abnormalities um, in which all the cells are abnormal. Um, when you have mosaics that are complex, so you have three or more um, chromosomes involved, also very few of the inner cell mass were, were normal. But when you have uh, mosaics that involve one chromosome, uh, then we have on average about 40% of the inner cell mass uh, were, uh, were normal. So uh, as you could see, uh, you could have basically about 40% uh, of embryos that are mosaic could still produce a normal baby, uh, provided that they are not complex mosaics. Uh, this is another study also by um, another group, but here uh, they didn't detect mosaics. Uh, they just compared inner cell mass to trophectoderm. And again, if uh, they found that trophectoderm was abnormal, the inner cell mass was always abnormal. Uh, what's the incidence of mosaics? So this is, um, this is what we found in, in over 100,000 embryos. Um, as you could see, obviously, you have a, a decrease in euploidy with advancing maternal age, an increase in aneuploidy, but there is no increase in mosaics. Uh, actually, it seems that it's going down, but uh, really it's because uh, some aneuploid embryos uh, are also mosaics. So because aneuploidy is increasing, some of them are being classified as aneuploid. But uh, if you reverse it and just put all the mosaics in one line, you would see that it's a stable at around 18-16%. Um, around uh, this again uh, the same, uh, showing an output increasing and mosaicism not increasing. Um, yesterday I had a talk here about what could cause this, these mosaics and I think that uh, a big chunk of them are produced by how we are doing IBF and depending uh, on different methods uh, you could produce um, 
more mosaics than, than others. Uh, for instance, this is uh, data from uh, a group that in which we collaborate, uh, NYU, uh, showing that depending on the center, uh, you have more mosaicism than, than others, or at the contrary, you have more aneuploidy uh, or in between. So some centers produce more unknown embryos, more uh, aneuploid embryos, but fewer mosaics, and some produce uh, fewer aneuploid and more mosaics. Uh, this was in egg donors. Uh, in which you would expect uh, to have, uh, on average, about 60% normal embryos. What's the clinical outcome of these embryos? So uh, the first um, the first evidence uh, came from us because we had a misdiagnosis uh, with a race CGH, uh, in which we classified the embryo as um, as normal, and then we reanalyzed the embryo by netgen sequencing, and we found that it was a mosaic. So we reanalyzed all the, the misdiagnosis that we had uh, in over the years with netgen sequencing, and what we found that uh, the majority of them uh, were produced by by mosaicism. So. Um, for instance, uh, only 50% of them uh, were classified again as normal. Uh, the others were either triploid, uh, mosaic, aneuploid, mosaic segmental, or mosaic complex. So, obviously, if we have screened uh, these embryos, we will have had less uh, miscarriages. All of these were, were miscarriages. Uh, also, um, this is data by Fraguli et al. Um, mosaic embryos implant uh, less than normal embryos. And this has been published now by at least three groups. And obviously, at, at the country, also some of these embryos still can make it to, to blastocysts. This is the famous paper of, of Greco and, and Fiorentino. Um, so we have that they miscarry more, uh, they implant less, but some still can make it to a baby. And this makes sense if we consider that about 40% of, of embryos um, that the trifecta of them was a mosaic, uh, then in some mass was normal. This is data from uh, one of the centers that we collaborate with, NYU, uh, showing that uh, the ongoing pregnancy rate when you transfer a mosaic is much lower than, than when you transfer a, a euploid embryo. Now, which embryos, which mosaic embryos implant better? Um, so we found out that if you have a complex mosaic, uh, those only about 6% of them will produce a baby. Um, meanwhile, aneuploid mosaics, so one chromosome or two chromosomes uh, affected, uh, depending on the load of abnormal cells, if you have 20 to 40 percent, you get about 50 percent implantation rate uh, or ongoing pregnancy rate, uh, quite similar to euploid embryos. Meanwhile, you have more than 40 percent abnormal cells, you only have 30 percent. Uh, segmental mosaics, uh, also about 30 percent, uh, so in total, uh, about 30%, 37% of mosaics uh, would implant and produce a baby compared to euploid embryos in which, depending on the center, you get between 50 and 70% uh, ongoing pregnancy rate. So um, this helps a little bit in, in sorting which uh, blastocyst uh, to transfer. Um, interestingly, we didn't find a difference between um, mosaics that that had uh, a chromosome in uh, trisomy form or monosomy form. So when people say, well, uh, it's a mosaic and it's monosomic, so since there is no chance of, of this implanting, if it's in monosomic form, uh, <coughs> we would not transfer this embryo. Uh, well, we haven't seen this. Uh, and this is, it makes sense because uh, if there is a, a monosomy line, it means that there was somewhere a trisomy line uh, and vice versa. So we, uh, the, the guidelines, for instance, of PGDIS recommend uh, transferring first uh, monosomies than, than trisomies, uh, and we, we don't agree with that. At least the data doesn't support that. Uh, this is uh, data from two centers uh, that collaborate with us, uh, again, showing uh, that just by uh, screening against uh, mosaic embryos, uh, you have uh, higher uh, ongoing pregnancy rate compared to a race CGH in which uh, we couldn't do that. Uh, again, 
this is to maximize ongoing pregnancy rate when you have a bunch of embryos. Uh, it's a selection technique, uh, and if there is nothing else to transfer, then you transfer a mosaic embryo. Um, it's not um, it's not meant uh, in a way that somebody it's it's uh, or other groups are trying to to say that we are throwing away normal embryos. We are just selecting them. You do whatever you want with this selection, and it's between the patient and the doctor to decide that. So because of that, we we are promoting changing the the concept of um, how to analyze embryos. Uh, now we classify embryos in, in three groups, normal, mosaic, and euploid. Uh, and within mosaics, you can, you can also um, sort them depending on the potential uh, of implantation. Uh, as I said, uh, if there is many cells that are abnormal, uh, then uh, you rank them lower than if they have fewer cells that are abnormal. Um, this also, sorry, this also, um, if you have read the paper of Bolton, uh, there's a paper showing that in mice, uh, if you, they, they made chimeras that are normal and abnormal, and again, they show the same thing. Uh, depending on the load of abnormal cells, uh, you have a higher or lower chance uh, of uh, that embryo reaching term. If they reach term, um, there was uh, no evidence of, of mosaicism in those in those pups, in those mice. Uh, so basically, um, depending on the amount of abnormal cells, uh, the embryo will will not implant or or miscarry, uh, but seldom the abnormal cells will form part uh, of the the fetus. Uh, it seems that uh, at a certain level, the normal cells take over, and and then uh, the embryo will be normal. So before um, we, or still currently, if you use a CGH, you will classify an embryo as normal or abnormal. Uh, you will have a certain uh, error rate uh, between two and and ten percent, depending on the technique that you use. Um, and you have false and, and false positives and false negatives. Uh, with the new method, uh, with uh, high resolution edge and sequencing, now you will classify them in normal, abnormal, uh, or mosaics. And the error rate is minimized uh, this way if when you say that it's normal, it's more normal, and when you say that it's abnormal, it's more abnormal. Um, and uh, what we recommend is if you have a bunch of embryos, you have euploids and mosaics uh, to deprioritize mosaics. Uh, these are the the recommendations of PGDIS and COGEN, and at that time uh, there was no uh, you didn't have the, the evidence that we have now uh, regarding which uh, embryos can make it to, to a baby uh, when they are mosaics. There were very few data points. So I would recommend to, to changing them because, for instance, um, we think that there is no difference between mosaics that are uh, trisomic and monosomic. Um, any type of these mosaics uh, can reach term uh, depending on the amount of cells. So um, this this classification is um, it, it could be a tweak. So what's the risk of these mosaics producing a trisomic baby? Um, as you know, about two percent of uh, CVS uh, are mosaics. Uh, but what we've seen so far, I mean, we have only a hundred data points. Um, all the, the embryos that we have transferred and have produced babies, all are normal, but it's, it's only 82. So uh, supposing that 2% of them uh, should produce an abnormal baby uh, based on, on CBS, I would say that we need uh, many, many more data points to, to see the difference between um, if one of these uh, mosaic uh, embryos is going to produce or not. Um, a mosaic baby. So far, none of the, the ones that we have uh, are uh, abnormal. And this is data combining a Fiorentino's data and, and our data. Still, only 82 uh, have made it to a baby. Um, as I said, I think that there could be a difference between the, the mechanisms 
that you see in, in mosaic uh, fetuses compared to um, what we're seeing in blastocysts. Um, the paper of Bolton or data show that uh, it's a matter of uh, cell load and depending on, on um, the amount of abnormal cells, uh, these embryos may, may reach or not uh, term, but if they do, uh, mostly the, the normal cell line will have taken over and there is no effect then on, on the baby. Uh, also, there is a paper from some years ago from Weyer et al. showing that uh, in, placenta, in confined placenta mosaicism, the mosaicism was created in the placenta, not in the fetus. No, it's not that it's segregated to the fetus, but the placenta becomes uh, mosaic and, and abnormal um, just as a mechanism of to invade um, uh, to invade the, the mother and similar as cancer, right? So um, it's, it's not uh, probably uh, the same mechanism as what we're seeing at the cleavage stage. So in summary, uh, natural sequencing uh, is the, the only method, unless you do fish, uh, to uh, select or, or to, this, uh, to detect uh, mosaic embryos, about 21% of them uh, of embryos now at blastocysts stage are mosaics. Uh, they don't increase with advanced maternal age. And these embryos, uh, usually if we transfer them, either they will miscarry more, uh, they implant less, uh, but some can make it to a baby because about 40% of inner cell masses uh, could be normal. So the recommendation, again, is to transfer uh, first euploid embryos. And if there are no euploid embryos, uh, then you discuss with uh, your genetic counselor, the patient, and the doctor. And, and if you transfer them, then what we recommend is that you do amnio, uh, not CBS, because if you do CBS, you would be uh, testing again the trifecta there. That's all. Thank you.